Can we feed our family seven main dishes? That's right, seven nights worth of meals for just $20 from Aldi. Homestead Tessie recently did a video that I thought was brilliant. The main focus of the video was the fact that prices are going to be rising at Walmart. But toward the end of the video, for about five minutes, she gave the most amazing tips and ideas for how to take low cost ingredients and create main dishes. Well, I thought I would take it just a little bit further and I'm going to take $20 to Aldi and see how many main dishes I can make using just $20 of ingredients from Aldi. But here's the twist. None of my ingredients can cost more than $1. Can we do it? Daniel is here with us. Hello. He's headed to the store with me. <laughs> he is my amazing co-chef. And we're going to see if we can do it. We're in the car. Let's head out. And by the way, I'm going to make sure that Homestead Tessie's video that inspired this video is linked in the description. So when you're done watching this, head over to Homestead Tessie and tell her that Hope and Larry from Under the Median sent you. Hi, I'm here too. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, look at all the cars. Wow. All right, we're gonna find his place to park. What a novel idea. Mm hmm. All right. Cheap white bread, 99 cents. Not exactly nutritious, but remember, we're going for a buck or under per ingredient. We're getting one avocado for 79 cents. All right, canned mushrooms. We're kind of going to use these for a meaty consistency. We're going to make some black bean burgers and put these in to give it a little bit of texture. They are 99 cents. Speaking of which, we are grabbing one, two cans of black beans for 71 cents. Y'all, last week, those crushed tomatoes were 99 cents. They were on my list because I knew how much they were last week. No, they're $1.19, so they don't fit within the parameters of the challenge. So we're gonna have to substitute a smaller can of tomatoes. I am totally bummed. All right, Daniel has the calculator out. We are hoping that we can safely substitute one can of tomato paste and an extra can of diced tomatoes and still come in at $20 or under. We, we're gonna use diced tomatoes in some other recipes, so we're grabbing three cans of diced tomatoes, guys. We're gonna have to substitute something for the chili beans too, because they are out of chili beans. For chili beans, we are going to substitute some black beans and maybe a can of some great northern beans. All right, another last minute substitution. We're gonna do the cannellini beans instead of the great northern beans for our chili mac because we feel like that that would substitute better for the chili beans. And then we were going to do something with um, a curried um, garbanzo bean over pasta, but now they are out of garbanzo beans. So once again, we are sort of flipping gears here, being a little flexible. And we're gonna do two can of the great northern beans instead of the garbanzo beans. And y'all, I have no idea what we're gonna come up with, but Daniel's gonna help, so it's gonna be brilliant. You'll see, when we get home, we'll show ya. Here you go, here Dan. Thank you. All right, we're adding on one green bean and three corns. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit dicey. Whenever you're doing kind of a challenge in the grocery store or you're really, really limited on funds, one of the things you wanna make sure that you're doing is figuring out what your base ingredients are. So that's like those starches that are gonna support all the other ingredients on top of them. Uh, under normal circumstances, I would use rice, but none of the rice is a dollar or under, and that's part of our challenge. So despite the fact that I hardly ever get anything like these rice pilafs. I'm gonna go ahead and buy two of these and you're gonna see what we're gonna do with it. Uh, we're not going to actually use it 
as the mix that is intended to be used for. It's not gonna be a side dish, it's gonna be used to create a soup. Taco shells for 99 cents and refried beans for 92 cents. For the purpose of the challenge, we're assuming that you have basic condiments and spices and flour already at home. This is one example of when you really wanna go ahead and take a look at something that's pre-made. This taco seasoning mix is only 38 cents and we're gonna use it for several of our recipes. Here's another example of a mix that we're buying. We're getting them onion soup for 80 cents. When you come to the store and your funds are limited, we only have $20 that we're going to spend on this shopping trip. You really need to look not only at products that are a dollar or under, but you have to look at the quantity that you're getting. Here's a great example. These are both pastas. This pasta, they look pretty much even, right? But this pasta is only 12 ounces for 92 cents. Whereas this pasta over here, 16 ounces for the same 92 cents. We will go with the 16 ounce pasta. I really want to get this pudding because I want to get a dessert, but mom says there's not enough money, so tell her how you feel about that in the comments. We are calculating the total one more time before we head to the checkout counter. Okay, here's what the haul looks like before we put it into the car. This is everything that we got. I'll kind of put it all down here so you can see what we got. When we get home, we are going to take it into the studio and then we're gonna show you the menu plan that we create using all of these items. The goal is at least seven main dishes for a family of four. So you're talking 28 servings for $20. Here's how we came out, $19.87. <laughs> Here is the bounty. Here is the <laughs> haul. We're going to show you now exactly what we do, the process we go through when we bring a grocery haul home, how we figure out how we're gonna use those items to feed our family for the next week. Speaking of our family, we did not introduce ourselves. <laughs> so let's do that. I'm Hope. And I'm Daniel. And this is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. Usually my husband Larry is with me on camera, but Daniel is my sous chef, and we don't let dad into the kitchen. <laughs> no. All right, we got 26 items. It cost us just shy of 20 bucks, so we met that goal, $19.87. But how in the world do you take this conglomeration of ingredients and figure out how to create recipes out of it? That's what we're going to show you right now. The first tip we have for you is to think outside of the box. And we mean that quite literally. For instance, this rice pilaf would not go very far on its own, so we're not going to make it according to the instructions. Instead, we're going to add it to a casserole or mix it into soup, or maybe we'll make it as it says and then we'll add more rice to it or even a box of pasta. There are so many ways to stretch something beyond what it's designed to do. Now, taking something like this and then adding some simple cans of vegetables to it. You can add some frozen vegetables or add just some corn or some beans or even some peas to it to stretch it and make it go farther. So the whole idea is look at what you have on hand and figure out how you can stretch it to feed even more people. Here's another idea this loaf of bread. One of the things that we do all the time, now we happen to know that a standard loaf of bread is about 14 slices of bread, but we may go to the extent of even counting this number of slices of bread that are in here so we know exactly how we're going to best use it. Bread is incredibly versatile. We use it in all kinds of ways. Oh yeah. You can dry it out and make croutons or breadcrumbs out of it. You can stick it in the bottom of a soup bowl to sop up some of the excess liquid, or you can use it as a thickener in other recipes. One of the things we mentioned in the store was that we were going to make some curried chickpeas and serve it over this one pound package of pasta. 
Uh, that didn't happen because they were out of garbanzo beans. So we had to do some really fast thinking in the grocery store. We wound up grabbing two cans of great northern beans. One of the things you want to think about when you see something like beans is once again, think outside the box. How can you use those beans in a way that is a little unconventional to actually pair it with this pasta in a really effective way? One of the things we would suggest is think about adding some spices to these beans, cooking them down a little bit, and then pureeing them, adding a little bit of either plant-based milk, or if you're not vegan like us, go ahead and add some cow milk to it. And that is going to make a sauce, a thick, rich, white sauce that you can put over the top of this pasta. And it's almost like a macaroni and cheese type consistency, yeah. only you've created a sauce for it using the two cans of beans. Now there's something else you might wanna use in flavoring those beans, and that is some of these seasoning packets. Yes, this rice pilaf will have a seasoning packet in it, and these are purely seasoning packets. So we're going to use this in some tacos and maybe a few soups. We're going to use this in soup, and we may even use the seasoning packet from the rice pilaf. The whole idea with these seasoning packets is yes, they're going to have a lot of salt in those seasoning packets. So rather than use the entire seasoning packet, we prefer to think of these in terms of just using, you know, one to three teaspoons or maybe even a, you know, one and a half tablespoons at yeah. the most in order to use them to augment the flavors that we really want in dishes. So you're still getting that flavor, but you're actually taking that sodium and spreading it out over more uh, serving so that you're having less of the sodium. Plus this stuff is super spicy and you do not want to use this whole packet. <laughs> <laughs> we have one that we got, it said hot. We it had meant no hot. Idea. It really no did. <laughs> it, was, it was way hot. So bear that in mind too, when you are buying seasoning packets, they may be a little bit different than you think they are. This onion soup in particular is very interesting as well, it can be onion soup, but that's a very small serving. Instead, <laughs> you can add it to sauces or dressings. You can add it to burgers and homemade soups. So a little bit goes a long way and you can use it a lot of different ways. Even these taco shells. Oh yes. You might see taco shells and think, well, that's really the only thing you can use them for. But no, my friend. You can take these taco shells and actually break them apart and then add them to some of the other ingredients that we got. For instance, these refried beans, maybe even some of these black beans to which we have added some of the taco corn. seasoning, a can of corn, and maybe even layering a few of these diced tomatoes. Now you heard me say layering because that's what we're gonna do. Put some of these taco shells on the bottom of a baking dish. Then we're gonna literally layer these flavors on top of these taco shells. Take the last couple of taco shells, crunch them up real small, put them on top, bake it off just like you would any other layered casserole in the oven in about 25 minutes maybe, yeah. about three, 50, 375 degrees until these are lightly crisped on top and you will serve your whole family with all of these items, only it won't be traditional tacos. And do not forget the avocado or I will <laughs> find you. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> also remember once it's baked off to slice up this avocado and layer it on top for a bit of creaminess. It'll give that fresh flavor. Oh, yes. One of the problems with doing this kind of supermarket challenge is that it's very difficult to get fresh ingredients for $20 to feed your family for a week. Now we were like deliberately sort of boxing ourselves in with that whole idea of not paying a dollar for any one ingredient. So that definitely kept us. In fact, at the store we walked around and I think the <laughs> only other thing we could have gotten that was fresh other than this avocado for 78 cents was some baby carrots. And those were like 90 or 95 cents for a container of the baby carrots. So it does become a little bit like when you do get a little bit of freshness, you want to add that pop of freshness in order to sort of elevate the dish a little bit so it doesn't feel so much like you're eating out of cans <laughs> and boxes. We also mentioned the lack of chili beans and we were going to make a magnificent chili mac, but our plans changed. So instead- We're still going to make a magnificent chili mac. It's oh, just yes. going to be a little different. Uh, instead chili beans though, we are using 
black beans. And we're also going to use some cannellini beans, which will give it a little bit of that chili flavor. We can also add, once again, remember there's multiple uses for this taco oh, yes. seasoning packet in order to season uh, that chili mac. So we'll make that basic chili mac and then we'll pour it over some of the cooked pasta. Once again, showing you that you need to be incredibly flexible. That's one of the things that I think we have figured out yeah. over the last few years is that in order to stay within our budget, we had to figure out how to be flexible and definitely how to substitute ingredients when the one that we really wanted just wasn't there on the grocery store shelves. All right, now we're going to tell you our ingenious menu plan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was a nice adjective. All right. Tell them our amazing. All right. We're making tacos <laughs> with the black beans, a little bit of the seasoning, the shells, avocado, refried beans, and corn. Then our second dish will be black bean burgers using the canned black beans, mushrooms, spices, tomato paste, a bit of flour, which we have on hand, mm -hmm. and then eight slices of bread. If we want to stay true to our challenge, we might even just crisp up a slice or two of this bread and then put it in the food processor and make crumbs out of it to use as the thickener uh, and the binder for the bean burger so we're not grabbing anything off of our shelves. Then we're going to make some rice and veggie soup using the two rice pilaf packs that we got. And then we're going to mix in some beans, diced tomatoes, corn, green beans, and finally spice it up with some of the taco seasoning mix and a little bit of the onion dip. The next thing on the menu plan is we will make that creamy bean sauce to go over the top of the one pound of the cooked pasta. And we are going to, you now you can, you have a choice here. If you wanna make it spicy, then you're gonna add some of the taco seasoning mix. And if you wanna make it more of a, maybe a traditional kind of a flavor for kind of almost like you were making gravy over toast or something like that. So that's what this is gonna be like over the top of this pasta. So in that case, if you want that kind of flavor profile, you're gonna add some of that onion soup mix. Finally, we're going to make our chili mac using the uh, not chili beans, <laughs> followed by crushed tomatoes, the onion soup mix, a bit more of the taco seasoning, corn, and then we're going to use one of the boxes of pasta. This menu plan will serve us for eight meals. That's 32 servings. And that means that each serving, can we do a drum roll? My famous drum roll. That's 62 cents per serving. And that is how you feed your family for a week using just $20 worth of ingredients from Aldi. We did this same challenge just a few weeks ago. We went to Dollar Tree, which we now call the- Buck and a quarter tree. That's right. And we got 16 items and we showed you how to feed our family for one week using those 16 items from Dollar Tree. If you haven't watched that video yet, it's right over there. Go ahead and give it a watch.